Okay, Johnson Pegasus started as a brainstorm of some brass at Johnson Alpha, Johnson Snowmobile Division, because they wanted to boost sales. So they mocked up an imaginary speed machine, took it around to some boat shows and snowmobile shows, and they were surprised at the interest it developed or grew. Then they were almost forced, hey, we got to build this thing and make this thing work. So from there, they developed the real machine. This shows the machine running in snow in Hibbing, Minnesota. They closed off a state back road, couldn't get it up to speed. Spring came, they borrowed some hotter engines from the outboard race department, and that's where they got the brainstorm to go to the Bonneville Salt Flats because they ran out of winter and didn't want to lose the publicity aspect of it. These are all development gentlemen. Here they were just clowning around, pulling it back for publicity photos. They would run it three miles. It took it a mile to get it up to speed. They run it for a mile, and then it took it a mile to deaccelerate it and stop it, and then they would push it back to their staging area, refuel it, cool it down, and go through it again. The sled had no brakes on it. They used parachutes to stop it. I have some very good original videos of this thing with the parachutes deployed, although normally they just left it uh, coast to a stop. They also found that they would push it with a vehicle up to 80 mile an hour. It was easier on the drive line uh, than trying to start out from, from a, de a dead standstill. Their track was their biggest obstacle with this thing. They couldn't come up with a track that would withstand prolonged over 120 mile an hour speeds. Goodyear finally developed a track that would work, paper thin, and what they had to do is they had to put an adjustment mechanism on it as the driver accelerated to up over 100 mile an hour, he would tighten the track and as he would deaccelerate, he would loosen the track. And if he wouldn't have loosened it, it would have tore the track. So that driver sitting in this thing at 140 mile an hour had a lot of things to do. He was a busy fella. <laughs> they used air shocks on the front suspension so they could uh, raise and lower the ride height. It had twin Johnson outboard engines that developed 150 horsepower each. They were water-cooled with a radiator in the rear. It had a halon fire extinguisher system in it, which that's still intact. The uh, nitrogen charge shock for the rear track adjustment is still intact. This is exactly how it came off the salt flats. In fact, every time I moved this thing, salt and rust fall out. <laughs> including yesterday when I let it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bob. Thank you, Dave.